Hi guys, thanks for stopping by again today. Um, we'd like to tell you a little bit about my great, 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 great grandparents. Uh, these are through my dad's side of the family. And today I want to tell you a little bit about Edward Nielsen and Catherine Banks. And they were from Scotland. And um, they actually were born and they died in Scotland. Uh, all of their children, there were nine of them that were born. I think a couple died when they were very young. Um, they all came to the United States after joining the church. Um, there is no record that Edward and Catherine uh, ever did join the church. And so it was actually, there's a great story, I might tell it in a couple of weeks, about how some of their children actually made a pilgrimage down to the St. George Temple in the late 1800s to have Edward and Catherine's work done. That's kind of a, a tale in and of itself. So um, maybe uh, today I want to talk about, uh, like I said, my great, 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 great grandparents. Um, they were in Scotland and they were living, uh, working the coal mines in Scotland. Now, um, unlike, uh, I mean, even today you hear on the news that coal mining is still a very dangerous uh, occupation. Uh, there's always problems with cave-ins and air quality. I mean, there, it's just a horrible, uh, it's not horrible, it's a, a very demanding profession. Um, now you could compare that with all the technology and what it's like today. Uh, you can't hardly even imagine uh, what coal mining might have been like in Scotland in the 1800s. So I do actually have a picture here. Um, Edward uh, Nielsen was actually what is called a coal hoyer. Uh, H-E-W-E-R, hoyer. It's actually from the German word as hauer means to, uh, to hit or break up. And uh, even in Germany now they have hoyer prüfungs. Uh, it's a test that you have to be to become certified uh, to work in the mines, but the, in the old English, I guess, uh, Cole Hoyer uh, was one who would work the, the face uh, at, the, at the mine. And uh, I did a quick search, and here you can see, when you think of mining, you don't, uh, I think I think a guy's standing up and chiseling and hammer. That's not the way it was. Uh, these, these coal mines uh, were very tight, narrow, horrible places to work. I mean, it's a demanding uh, work, and it's something that uh, takes a lot of effort and uh, uh, a lot of real guts to, to go and these are 12 hour shifts six days a week so uh, this this was not easy easy work at all um, now like I said coal mining in Scotland was not a trade or profession there were no organized guilds or trade associations and uh, I think uh, Ray Nelson uh, who was a descendant of Catherine Banks Nelson for uh, putting together some of the thoughts I'm going to share with you today. Um, the coal, of course, in the ground, the land was owned by barons um, or the lords over that piece of property. And back then, um, the people that worked the mines were considered an extension of the lords' holdings. Um, the law in Scotland at the time uh, called these people's colliers, and these colliers basically belonged to uh, the the, Laren, the 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 lords and the, the land barons uh, of the time. It was such that a collier could be arrested and charged with theft for if they were to leave the area that they were assigned to. Um, they, they called this being thurled, T-H-I-R-L-E-D. And thurled literally means that you were staked uh, to the ground. Uh, if you were a thurled collier, that means that you belonged to the landlord or the baron uh, who owned the mine. And if you were to ever leave, you could be arrested. Um, the law was changed in uh, 1797. Uh, but at this time, uh, Edward and Catherine were still very young. Um, and so they grew up in that type of an environment and atmosphere. And uh, 
things just like here when civil rights came about, that there's still time it takes to, to get things worked out. Um, now I should say that while Edward was a um, hoyer, um, Catherine worked as what's called a bearer. And so what happens is you have the hoyer who's up at the face of the mine uh, as they're following this vein of coal through the earth. They're the ones that are knocking the pieces uh, off the mine. And then Catherine was the one that would then put these in the baskets and take them up to the, the surface. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, actually, let's talk about that right now. Uh, Edward, uh, like I said, would remove the coal pieces from the mine. And they worked in teams. So every hoyer had a bearer. And most of the bearer, bearers at the time were women. Uh, the bearer's job was to hold the coal pieces from the coal face, where they were chipping away the, the coal uh, in, in the seam of uh, that, and take it to the surface. They were working about 300 feet below the, uh, the, the surface of the earth. Okay? The, bearer, the bearers carried the coals in what they called a creel, and this is a soft woven material that was made into kind of like a basket. Uh, they would carry this on their backs, and the creel was held in place by a strap that went around their foreheads, okay, or around their heads. And then they would hang a small metal lantern from a strap across their forehead. Now, this was an open flame. Uh, I don't know if, whether it was an oil-based, probably oil-based. I don't think, yeah, oil-based lamp. I don't think they'd want to use candles. And that's the only light they had there. Um, Great, great, great grandmother Catherine would then carry a, each creel. They would weigh probably no more than 180 pounds, but the lightest ones they said would be about 100 pounds of coal. And uh, they would take that through the mine and then up the scaling ladders, okay, uh, to get them from one level to another until uh, they could get out of the mine. Now, you have to remember that uh, in Scotland, um, they have a problem with groundwater. And so uh, sometimes uh, they would be moving in knee-deep water and very low ceilings. I mean, this is, these are some pretty frightening conditions that they would, uh, would deal with. Um, like I said, the mines at that time were about 300 feet uh, below the surface. And uh, depending on the depth that they were working at or how far it was to the uh, face of the coal mine, it said Catherine would make anywhere between six and ten trips a day uh, with 100 to 180 pounds on her back uh, going up those, i got to believe they were pretty rickety ladders. There was no OSHA back then for safety standards. Um, this was some pretty serious, uh, serious work that they did. Um, Edward and Catherine then were paid uh, as a hewer and a bearer working together as a team, paid by the weight of the coal that they delivered to the surface every day. Um, the Nilsons other children uh, would babysit the uh, the other so that the siblings basically would tend themselves at the entrance to the mine uh, where Catherine could then check on them periodically as she made her trips back and forth into the mine and, uh, and back out. Um, at age seven children were expected to help out by sizing the coal um, as it was brought to the mine and at age 12, they would begin uh, working in the pits as both bearers and helpers. In the early teen years, that's when they would become, uh, at least for the, the men, uh, you could become a hoyer at, at that time. They typically, uh, it was a 12-hour day, uh, six days a week. They were not educated, and most of them could not read. Um, so these were very, very harsh conditions. But... It says they were not a dismal people. Uh, they were fiercely proud of their status as uh, colliers and uh, lived together in very tight-knit communities, uh, usually right at the, around the entrance uh, to the coal mines. Um, it says they were frugal beyond imagination. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, there's not a lot else to do. i got to believe on that one day that they had off, Probably Sunday school was looking like a pretty good option uh, to get out of the mines. and uh, But I think you got to remember that uh, we're talking about the very lowest level 
of Scottish social and economic uh, situations. Um, these were dirt poor uh, people that, uh, uh, but they were, were quite religious, it says. Um, uh, of course, things uh, got bad. There was a, a great story I read in, uh, I think it's under Edward's entry into Family Search about how uh, the, uh, the, the, the Lord of, of Abercombe, I think it's Lord of Abercombe, uh, who had bought a uh, steam-powered pump to remove groundwater from the, uh, uh, the, the coal mine. Uh, there was actually a flood and everything was destroyed, and so things were pretty tight for a while, and they ended up uh, kind of moving, moving around. Um, Catherine and Edward's children joined the church in 1847, it says, and uh, they were actually heard uh, missionaries preaching at a street side. So they had just stood on a street corner or a couple missionaries preaching the gospel. Uh, word spread quick, quickly among the, uh, the Nelson family, and uh, they were all baptized. However, there is no record that Edward or Catherine ever joined the church, and um, they're not even sure on the exact dates of their death. Um, I think at one place, uh, we do know that Catherine did die first because Edward remarried a lady by the name of Margaret O'Neill. Um, they had no children, uh, but most, um, most people believe that uh, if they were baptized, I guess they said the records were not kept well in the small little branch there in, in Scotland where they were leaving. So uh, it was later uh, that... The children uh, of Edward and Catherine made that journey down to um, St. George, where their ordinance work was done and, and they were sealed. So uh, I guess the bottom line is, you can imagine, uh, none of us have really ever had to toil or sacrifice uh, the way Catherine and Edward had to do. But I find it interesting that uh, the, that, uh, the, the sacrifice and the, the things that they experienced in their life uh, maybe use that as an example uh, when you're facing hard times. Know that you've come from a line of people uh, that have toiled very hard in their lives and have dealt with great challenges. And if you can take any consolation and, and hope in knowing that you know your, your ancestors got through it, maybe you can too. Um, thanks again for stopping by. We'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.